The 2024 BYU football Big 12 schedule is out. We got a lot to cover. What do we think about the Big 12 opener for the Cougars? Plus a surprise date featuring the rivalry with Utah. We'll break down the schedule even more with Blaine Fowler and discuss what stands out to him the most on this year's schedule. ESPN Sean Farnham drops by for his weekly visit to on the program. How hard is the Cougars visit to Morgantown this weekend? And where are the Cougars ranked in this week's AP poll and how many Big 12 teams are ranked this week? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, January 30th. I am Spencer Linton. He is a man with one shot, one opportunity, Jerem Jordan. Marshall Mathers uh, was with brother Steve Young, um, who, who tweeted the following over the weekend with the Niners, Lions, and the NFC Championship. <laughs> Might need to bring the GOAT in for that mixtape after all, tweeting back-to-back uh, -back weeks about uh, rappers. So, uh, yeah, Eminem uh, in the house, of course, who... Uh, told some of the Niners fans the Lions were number one. Oh, man. I feel so terrible for the Lions fan base. Like, we're stoked for Fred. Super stoked that he's got an opportunity to compete for a Super Bowl ring against Andy Reid and Matt Bush. I like how you phrase that, Fred. I'm not stoked for the Niners. Hey, Fred, Fred, is, our, he, Fred is our guy. Lions like, it's blew it, dude. super cool, but the Lions blew absolutely it. blew it. My heart goes out to Eminem and every other Detroit Lions fan because when are they going to be back? Uh, maybe in another 80, 30 years, 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> what a, that's been so hard. Oh, oh that, 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 that was brutal for sure. But a cool pick nonetheless. Steve's uh, social media swagger and his uh, ramping up that, that, that swagger continues. Like his, the selfies that that guy gets are unbelievable. He's, he's Steve Young, man. <laughs> that little he's, easy, he's Steve. little Eminem. <laughs> Uh, that said, all rise and shout. Let's get to what's trending. And Batty got to him for the big drop. And it's caught by Darius Lassiter. It's picked off for the 40, 30, the 20, the 10, and the touchdown from Jacob Robinson. Big 12 football schedule shenanigans. Today's What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. We waited a long time for the dates and the opponents to be placed in specific dates, but now we have it. The yeah. entire Big 12 does. So let's go ahead and break down the entire BYU football schedule yeah. in the 2024 slate. Beginning with, yes, we knew the non-conference, Southern Illinois at SMU. That's going to be a Friday night game in Dallas. At Wyoming, we'll close out the non-con, and then BYU's Big 12 opener against Kansas State in Provo at Lavelle Edwards Stadium on September 21st. BYU did not take on the Wildcats last year. This is the first time they will face each other in Big 12 play. BYU then renews the, the budding rivalry with Baylor on the road, then home to a sneaky Arizona team that's got a lot of talent, but a new coach. Used to be sneaky. Now they're out, out in front. Everybody knows. Oklahoma State on October 18th or 19th. Ooh, then BYU uh, give me a Friday. makes a long road trip to Orlando at UCF on October 26th. The final four happen after a bye week, beginning with Utah on November 9th. Not Thanksgiving weekend, but still a November game. And again, both teams, BYU and Utah, will come off a bye before they play each other that Saturday. Then BYU hosts Kansas on November 16th. At Arizona State on November 23rd, the home finale and regular season finale features the Cougars versus Cougars matchup as Houston visits Lavelle Edwards Stadium once again. Jerem, there you have the schedule. What are your immediate reactions to that 12-game slate? I'm still used to being in Independence. I'm not used to being in the Big 12, so this is awesome. First off, that's my uh, first reaction. Uh, my .5 reaction right before that is, uh, why isn't Utah the last week of the schedule? <laughs> I wish it was the last week. I don't understand why it's not, but it is coming off of a buy for both, and so there will be two weeks of rivalry talk. That will be fun. We'll see where both teams are at at that point. That's going to be a ton of fun. Um, Again, I don't like the game at Wyoming, but it is what it is. Kansas State at home is kind of fun. Um, that's the first time, right, since the Cotton Bowl that they will have played. So that's, yes. that's, a, that's a fun uh, narrative around that, right? At Baylor is really interesting to me because uh, we've, you know, played two years in a row in 21 and 22, not last year. I, I like Baylor in that regard that there's some, uh, you know, Campbell Barrington still there in terms of connections. Uh, the transfer there. Arizona's good, man. Arizona's good. That'll be a tough game. 
Oklahoma State, that back-to-back -back there is the only two home games in a row for BYU all year. There's, there's, it's, it's one time and you get two games uh, in a row right there. Otherwise, you, you got a road game in there. Against arguably maybe two of the best teams in conference back-to-back -back at home. Not if you ask Utah. But, uh, Based on yeah. what happened last year? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, but c totally, totally. They, they feel like they're upper uh, crust there. Okay. At UCF is a long road trip, right? But BYU only plays two road games that aren't in adjacent states, meaning it's not that long to go to Arizona State on November 23rd. Obviously, Salt Lake, Laramie. Um, it's, it's basically Texas and Florida. Texas twice, right? Yeah. Because of SMU and right. Baylor. So, okay, there's three times. It's not too bad. Like, of the six yeah. road games, totally manageable. Um, Kansas is fun. Jeff Grimes coming back as the OC there with Jayhawks. Houston as the regular season finale doesn't, like, pique my interest like uh, Utah would, for example, or, or I, I don't know. So maybe someone bigger, but that's the first game between those two since 2020, right? So... Yeah, it's, it's interesting, man. Um, BYU has two sets of road games on the season um, at SMU, at Wyoming, yeah. and then at UCF, at Utah. Yeah. The bye weeks are well-placed, by the way. So you play five games, then a bye. Conference weekend, Conference by the way. Conference weekend, yeah. Very convenient. Well-placed. Let's listen to a prophet's voice, and then let's play some ball against Arizona after that. <laughs> and then before Utah is also fun. So Overall, I like it. I really wish Utah had been the last week of the regular season. I don't understand why it's not. I would like that explained. But uh, other than that, pretty good. I do like a Friday game once in a while, so I like SMU in that spot. And then give me Oklahoma State on a Friday. They have declared that that is an option for October 18th. You like the Friday night games. I love a Friday night Even game. Even though BYU already has one against SMU, you'd opt for a second one? I love two. I don't want any Thursdays, though. Just too short of a week, yeah, so I'm glad that's yeah. not the case. Friday night home games are fun. They're beautiful. I love the energy of the day. I love doing BYU Sports Nation in the stadium on All those of it, Fridays. Dog. Really fun. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I was a little surprised to see the Utah game that early in November. I thought uh, it'll probably be one of the final two games. And that's not uncommon. Like, even in the WAC days, BYU sometimes played Utah yeah. the second to final week of the season, which was fine. you got to like, go back a ways, though. It, it's cool. Yeah. I thought it would be one of the final two weeks. So to see it, the first game in November, yeah, that's a little bit of a head-scratcher. We ask bracket matrix questions about BYU basketball. Maybe we need to ask the Big 12 schedule matrix. What happened <laughs> what? there? Like, why November 9th? I, I, I think the ESPN analytics said go for it. <laughs> what? I do love that it's after a bye for both teams. I think that just I was hoping it, it wouldn't be for Utah. Yeah, yeah, for sure, me. like an advantage for BYU. <laughs> but it just adds to the intrigue of the yeah. game and, and more buildup. By that time, Isaac Wilson's taking over the starting job. <laughs> we got that storyline. I do love two buys as well. I, I love that about this schedule. August 31st creates two buys. Y you need that. Yes, I think that will help BYU this year in year two in the league. I'm just looking at, okay, and we're going to discuss this at length because now we finally we, have the schedule. We, we have so many topics. I don't topics. know what you're talking about. We don't have time. We don't have, we it's don't have time. It's January 30th. We don't have time in the next eight months. I'm just, I'm just Seven looking months, at the, eight months? the path to six. Okay? okay. The path to six wins okay, for let's, BYU. Let's talk about it. <laughs> okay. Southern Illinois. Check. At, at SMU at Wyoming. You split those? Two and one? Okay. <laughs> Two and one in non-con. And then you come home. Which, and which loss is acceptable? At SMU? Because that Probably. Wyoming ain't acceptable. S SMU was a team that won, a, what, 11 games last year? They were nationally awesome. nationally ranked. It's an ACC game. We all saw that coming Okay, so ago. we'll split two and one coming out of non-con. But then BYU comes home to take on an intriguing Kansas State team who lost their quarterback, but it's still Kansas State. Will Howard went to Ohio State, dude. They're always well coached, but, yeah, who are they at quarterback and, and what are they on the road against BYU? Is BYU uh, typically Anderson plays well. still there? He was, he was a baller. BYU typically plays well. Early in the season, especially at home, okay, yeah. the conference opener. So I, I don't know. I, I think BYU's first conference game typically will be a game that BYU is pretty good in. They're relatively yes, healthy. They There's yeah, lots of juice. They typically are. Let's say that's a win. That'd okay. be a big win. Three and one. That'd be a big win. Hey, at Baylor, Baylor was not good last year. I don't know what to expect. And they year. just lost a ton of their coaching staff again and had a ton of key transfers. So yeah. what in the world is Baylor? There's a certain former Baylor quarterback who might suit up for BYU against Indeed. Baylor. Who knows? Who I actually, knows? actually like BYU's chances in that game in Waco. 
But I can't say that's a win. I, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, toss up. Yeah. Okay, so three and one and a toss up. Then you come home to what I think is the toughest three game stretch on the entire schedule. Agreed. Holy cow. You host Arizona. Who's you, good now at football. You host Oklahoma State, who was in the Big 12 championship game a year ago and nationally ranked. And then you got to go on the road to Orlando for your longest road trip after you host Arizona and Oklahoma State. Mm. That is brutal. Like, can BYU win one of those three? Like, that's, is, that's is, a that tough a, stretch. is that fair? Well, because back to back Arizona and Oklahoma State, again, that's your only two home game stretch in a row. And against two of the upper echelon teams. Is Arizona, despite, um, you know, Jed Fish leaving, are they going to be able to maintain? Are they going to be able to be as good as they were? I don't know. Mm. Fafita's a good quarterback. Arizona, that's a team that BYU traditionally has had great success against. And it's in Provo. But this is a different Arizona team. Kind of like Kansas football. They got good. Arizona last year. Got good. Um, and they were good in 2016. But it's once in a blue moon, right? Desert Swarm and the whole deal. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't know which game I can definitively say is going to be a win. <laughs> can we by percentage say one of those two one of the is three? a win? Sure, or one yeah. of those three is a win? Okay. What are we up to? So, four and three with a toss-up. We're on schedule. And then in the final four, at Utah. Oof. Kansas at home. Tough. At Arizona State. Winnable game. That, that team is in the dumps. A and bit. Houston has a coaching change as well, and they've got to come to Provo in the final week of the season. You hope you don't need to win the last Correct. two to make a bowl I game. I hope BYU is six and five at worst going into that game with Houston. Yeah. So you're already bowl eligible, and you get a chance to win seven regular season games. Again, we'll say this a million, a gajillion times. <laughs> we hope to be surprised, right? Oh, BYU won eight games. That's awesome, right? But the minimum threshold for BYU football is to make a bowl game. Yes. We're never going to project, at least I won't, I won't speak for you, but that BYU would ha win less oh, than Oh, you can speak for me in that regard. Six. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I know who cashed the checks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I cashed the checks. They give the checks, I guess. But, yes, BYU is more than capable of going six to eight wins right here. I don't see, like, a nine-win season per se. But I do, in 25, see BYU building towards – more competitive, right? BYU's got to get over the hump. Year, I mean, year to year, you could suddenly explode out. But when you're – and have this amazing year. But in, in one season, you've got to make dramatic, dramatic improvement. And that is only manifest on the field. It cannot be projected. Like, no one was projecting that BYU men's basketball would sure. be doing what it's doing. But it certainly can. The way that BYU is recruited is awesome. But we won't see the real fruits of that for probably two and a half years where these guys are back from missions or they're in the program for – Two seasons, that third season, they're really popping and so on and so forth. So I, I'm stoked about it. I, it's a great schedule. It's awesome. Um, I don't like playing a G5 road game, but it is what it is. You, you get after it. But if BYU loses that game, it will be tough to swallow. Oh, man. Because it's like, wait, couldn't you have scheduled the G5 at home that you went? So BYU has to go win that game, Spencer. I know. They have to win it, Wyoming. If BYU starts 3-0, and though, it just makes it a lot easier in league. Because now you can go three and six. You made a bowl game. You've checked that box. Certainly, BYU's goals are higher than just make a bowl game. But you have to start there. You have to actually do that. Because last year, it didn't happen. And it was somewhat to be expected in terms of, well, it's going to be tough. You're going to be on the fringe there. Vegas was telling us, hey, BYU may not make a bowl game, the four and eight kind of thing. We were like, eh, no, they're better than this. BYU couldn't run the ball. BYU couldn't run the ball for a long time, and that really hurt them. The defense was keeping BYU in games. And then they played a really tough Final Four there where they had to play the backup, Jake Retzloff, who did a nice job, but he was playing really tough competition. This program's growing, getting used to it, and hopefully, like the men's basketball team, we see them take on tough competition and continue to get stronger. And I think they will this year. And we've known for a while who's BYU, or who BYU's opponents would be. Yep. But again, just to reiterate, yeah, there are now 16 teams in the conference. You play nine conference games, which means – BYU will not face six teams. They include Iowa State, West Virginia, Cincinnati. No coach prime in Colorado. That was kind of a bummer for me when I found out. I know, I wanted year. Colorado. I wanted Colorado on the yeah. schedule. No TCU and no Texas Tech. Yeah, Texas Tech this year would have been fun, given Spitgate and the conversation <laughs> around that. And that was got weird. But uh, it's exciting, man. Let's go, man. Our question of the day, straight up. What do you think of BYU football 2024 Big 12 schedule? Do you like it? Do you hate it? What would you change about it? Who it's hates perfect? Who hates it? Just not not the whole thing. Like Utah not being the last week. Who who hates this? Lucas Kramer on Instagram says, 
Why is Utah in week nine instead of being in rivalry week? That's, uh, we're all going to be talking about that. <laughs> I, that's the first thing I looked at. And oh, like, yeah. What? Yeah, you see that, but then you're like, oh, but it comes off a bye. Okay. <laughs> all right. Moral scheduling victory? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh. Why is <laughs> it? want to phrase it that way. I, I, want, I want an explanation. Why isn't it the last week? Schedule matrix. Why not? What say ye? At Roman Cougar on X says, Love everything about it. Deflate some of the hype of the Utah game. And let's BYU seniors finish with a game that will have less intensity going into it. Really like the Arizona State spot. Do you like the idea of BYU having a more winnable, less competitive, vitriol-based game late in the season? Okay, the wheel started to spin there. At Utah is the last game if you need it to make a bowl game. There's a lot of pressure in that game to win already, no matter where it is. So maybe that's a good thing. Okay. But... Uh, hey, go win up there. The last time BYU went up there, they were up 20 at halftime and, and didn't win the game. So <sighs> go, go up there. Utah expects to come in and run the league right away. So I, I can't wait for uh, the parody of this league to humble some, to make <laughs> the, the proud and, and mighty lowly. So we, we'll see. I, this is the land of 9-3. and three. It really is. And hopefully BYU is at least 6-6. Six and six. Come on. Hashtag BYUS on an X, Facebook, and Instagram to answer the question, what do you think about the schedule? Coming up, number 22 now, BYU men's basketball. Dropped a spot. Why? Why did they what? drop a spot? At West Virginia, Saturday pregame coverage on BYU Radio, 5 Eastern time. All right, football out, basketball in next as we reconvene with the man, Sean Farnham of ESPN hey. College Basketball Elite Analyst. What impressed him the most from BYU's win over Texas? And is he buying BYU as a heavy favorite in Morgantown like the analytics say they are? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Foose by himself, and he hammers it home. Leaf up for the finish at the rim. Mid-range jumper, good. Jackson Robinson feeling it. We are live at Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. BYU, what an impressive performance against Texas. I, I know we've kind of talked at length about it already, but what, what my was, goodness. What was the phrase you used yesterday? Horns inverted. Horns inverted. 64% <laughs> from the field overall. BYU shoots 41% from the three-point line, but only takes 17 76% shooting from two-point field goal range. Just wild numbers. And interestingly enough, our friend Sean Farnham, who joins us now, ESPN College Basketball Elite Analyst, was speaking with us last week about BYU probably needing to find a different way to win this game against Texas. And, Sean, you were on it. They did. Texas you should was, do this for a living. Hey, they were clearly going to take away the three-point line, and BYU's team responded how you kind of hoped that they would to show that they have something else in the arsenal. Yeah, but we're not starting there, guys. Uh, I can't. I can't. I've been sitting here for the last 15 minutes hearing you guys cry about the fact that the Utah game <laughs> isn't the last game uh, on your schedule. So, I mean, in the, in the news of the day world, that maybe is a little bit fresher for all the BYU fans, let's just start with this. Okay. Stanford-Cal, would we agree that's a good rivalry? 100%. Like, I mean, Fantastic. Okay. Not the last game of the season. In fact, Stanford will end with San Jose State. USC and UCLA, would we agree that that is a – a very strong It used rivalry. to be. Great game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, UCLA ends their season with Fresno State. So stop. <laughs> stop. When the game we shows up, is anybody there going to be sitting there going like, oh, well, I'm really excited for the game, but I'd be even more excited if it was next week. Uh, you know, I mean, like, just relax. We're good. Uh, We're good. You know what? On January 30th, I'm, BYU didn't have a basketball game tonight. We're looking to get riled up about something. Uh, so there it is. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, you know, it's normal sports media nowadays. You guys are fake news. You're stir, fake media stir, right stir now. The pot. Just try to stir it up. Stir hot take central. It I get it. It took you a long time to figure this out, but finally <laughs> you did. Uh, okay, so for BYU in Texas, this is one of the best wins of the year for BYU. And like, like no Spencer doubt. mentioned, they figured out a different way to win, which is good because BYU has been fouling a lot, not shooting as many free throws as the opponent, da, da, da. They didn't have to rely on the three on Saturday. No, and, and look, the, every game in this conference is going to be one or two possessions. I'd like to say that I'm wrong, but the metrics are showing that I'm probably going to be right more than I'm wrong. Look at what Texas did last night at home 
against Houston, a, a team that they could have beaten, by the way. They could have beat the Cougars last night. Um, and it's, it's blow for blow, punch for punch. And what I love more than anything about this game was 40 points in the paint. I think that was the number. I don't have the box yep. score up in front of me. But yes. 40 points in the paint. Like, I haven't seen a number even remotely close to that seemingly all season long. And maybe it happened in some of the non-conference games when they were walloping people by 100. Okay, but I'm talking about in the significant games in which they have played, they have relied heavily upon the three-point shot. They have not been able to manufacture points in other ways. You have to be able to do that because here's, here's the reality of it. The Big 12, and Coach Pope has talked about this a lot. It is a grind, all right? Every game is a grind. Grinds aren't sprints. You know what three-point shots are? Sprints, finesse. Grind means you've got to get dirty, you've got to get tough, and you've got to figure out a way to get through the moments when things are not going right. And when they're not going right, if you are mentally and physically stronger than your opponent, you're going to win. And as we mentioned last week when I joined you guys, those first six games, that was a gauntlet. This stretch that you're in right now, this is your winning stretch if you want to be a top-half finisher inside mm -hmm. the Big 12. And I think BYU is capable of doing that. It started with Texas. Like, yeah, is that a tough game? Yeah. Heck, yeah, it's a tough game. Mm -hmm. they, they just beat back-to-back -back ranked opponents before they showed up to, into town. But you knocked them off. Good. That's maybe a 50-50 game. And you came out on the right side of it. Tonight is a 75-25 game. Or when they play, I mean, not tonight, but when they play West Virginia. Sure. It's a 75-25 game. They've got to go get this one and, and add to that and build momentum and get wins. Like, I think out of this six-game stretch, I think four wins is something that's very doable for this team. And if you get four wins out of six inside the Big 12, you feel really a lot better about where you're at. And I think there's going to be start to be some separation. I, I, I talked about this on Saturday uh, when I called the uh, – the Baylor TCU game. I think it's still going on. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but I, I talked about the fact that I do believe that there's going to be some separation here. I do believe that like Kansas state, I think is going to start moving in the opposite direction. I, I think that West Virginia stays where it's at. Oklahoma state stays where it's at. Um, UCF is going to be a bottom half team. So now you start to look at the teams at the top and you'd say, okay, uh, Texas Tech is there right now. They're the only team with a winning road record in conference play. They're on the road tonight against TCU. Um, that's a game I think they probably lose. Uh, so now that drops them down a little bit. And I think you start to see Houston emerge. I think you talked about Kansas is going to be up there. Um, I'm not sold. And then I think there's a grouping. And I think BYU's in this grouping. But it's, it's Texas Tech. It's TCU. It's Oklahoma, Baylor, and BYU. Now, what order is that going to be at the end of the year is going to largely be determined, obviously, I think, in this next six-game stretch because I think you can either gain momentum or lose momentum in conference play. When you're looking at the schedule, first six games, feeling everything out, trying to come out on fire, it's easy to be excited, right? You're starting conference play. You're like, yeah, let's go. Big 12, here we go. Nobody's been in our place. Let's, we're going to do this. And then you come out and you lose to Cincinnati. It's kind of like wah, wah, wah. And yeah. you're kind of like, oh, gosh, like what are we doing? Like we need to – now you got your feet back underneath you. Let's go. Six games. What are you going to do here that's going to set up that final stretch run? Because it's easy to get excited going into March. It's easy to get excited go when you're like, hey, Kansas City, here we come, Big 12 tournament. Are we going to get a bye? Can we get a bye? Can we get a double bye? What, what are we looking at here? And I think that that's where we're looking at right now for this BYU team is this six-game stretch to me is the most important six-game stretch that they have all season long. Sean Farnham bringing it on BYU Sports Nation. It begins with, as you are alluding to, West Virginia. According to ESPN's Basketball Power Index, BYU an 82% chance to win that game. Ken Pomeroy's index has BYU as a set, or 85% winner on the road. So they're even higher than me. Man. I said 75%. Yeah, well, I understand why you bring that number down because I think there's – some trepidation Have you collectively been to from the famous. Exactly. Yeah, I have for the football game, and it got weird really quick. Like that the fan Applebee's base. Applebee's is oh. a great restaurant, though. Best place to go to. <laughs> Duly noted. I didn't go there last time. I, I apparently I missed out. All right, Sean. The fajitas are amazing. Okay, you said seventy-five percent. You feel good about that number in terms of BYU's chances I do. to win? Okay, why? Why? Because some fans feel like it, that's a fifty-fifty game because they've beaten Kansas and Texas in Morgantown. Because they've won those games, though, I don't think that BYU walks in there and goes, oh, this is going to be a rollover game. There are no rollover games, right? 
And the record can kind of confuse you. They had guys out earlier. They've had issues with injuries and whatnot. I think West Virginia is a little bit better than where they've been. I think they're better at home. But I, I think this is a mental game more than it is a physical game for BYU. BYU is a more talented team. Uh, BYU is a more explosive offense. Uh, BYU, if they bring the same mentality that they brought against Texas, which allows their offense to score in a variety of ways, can win this game and can really set the tone in this contest early. But if you give West Virginia hope on their home floor, that's where you get in trouble. When they got the guy running around with like the musket and shooting <laughs> it like twice a game and scaring the <laughs> heck out of everybody that's in attendance. Uh, the worst is, by the way, if you're losing there, just so you know, everyone, like you should tell Coach Pope this, but if you're losing at like the under four timeout, he'll go right behind your bench and fire a shot off. <laughs> I kid you not. And it is like, you're like, what is going on here? Like, it's a dude running around with like a Davy Crockett hat on. Like, it, it is it is unbelievable. Uh, but the environment is going to be intense. Um, they're, West Virginia is going to be physical. They're going to compete. Uh, they, like, is this, this is rinse and repeat right now, guys. Like, I, it, it is so hard to make this transition. I think you saw that in Houston when they dropped back-to-back games for like the first time in a gazillion years under Kelvin Sampson. And then they got their feet back underneath them, and now they look pretty good again, right? They look like a team that could maybe win a national championship. I think that, that when you change conferences, there are no Pacifics. There's no Pepperdines. There's no USDs where you, you get off the bus and you're like, we're 20 points better. So even in a game like this where you have a sub-500 record in your opponent, you talk about those wins. You show your team those wins. You show that Kansas – a team that a lot of people think can win a national championship, went in there, lost. Texas team that you guys just fought, went in there, lost. So you have the video evidence to, like, remind your guys of, like, this is the challenge. This is what we signed up for. Are, are you willing to accept that challenge? And it's not about one day accepting it against Texas. It's about the ability to accept it against Texas and then completely forget about Texas and recalibrate and do it all over again. That is the greatest challenge that they will have uh, throughout the rest of conference play, and that's the challenge every team has inside the Big 12 in particular this year. It's fun to watch BYU grow because the, the team that uh, took fifth in the WCC last year. I thought year, you were going to talk about your hair. It's unbelievable. It's I agree. It's amazing like, to see it grow <laughs> it's every just ridiculous. day. You Thank weren't you. here last week, so I didn't get I to do this to you. I know. So. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, Sean. Uh, sp- speaking of, uh, have you recovered from the uh, Baylor-TCU game? Because you said – you took off the jacket. You were loosening the tie. At what point – how many overtimes before you would have lost the shirt? I would have never lost the shirt. Um, <laughs> only Bill Walton can take off his shirt uh, on a national broadcast. Uh, so I definitely would not have done that. But, like, uh, but maybe sleeves or something? Analyst. like <laughs> Rolling up the sleeves, rolling up the sleeves would have definitely happened on another overtime. Uh, I would have definitely just not even cared and started drinking water while on camera. Uh, my voice was uh, feeling it towards the end of that game. Uh, so I, I kind of shut it down um, until the 49er game, and then when the 49ers took care of business and Fred Warner, a great BYU Let's go, Cougar. Fred. Let's go, Fred. Good job, Fred. Played, played absolutely unbelievable for my Niners to get into the Super Bowl. Let's go. Yeah. Um, uh, but, no, I, you know what? That was one of the more memorable games I think I've called in 20 years just because of how back and forth it was, how wild it was, how many times I thought – you know, a team was going to pull away and then the other team f- seemingly figured it out. There was never a run of 10 or more points in that game the whole time through three overtimes. Nobody went on a 10 nothing run at any point. The largest run was seven and five. Um, so it was just it was one of those evenly matched games. that was a lot of fun. Uh, Chip Gaines was there. Uh, I was trying to see if they would come and redo my my living room. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, I don't think that they were listening. I, I don't think that Joanna was at home being like, you know what, that Farnham guy is really nice. Uh, maybe we can get him on uh, Baylor Sports Nation. Uh, so uh, it's, instead, uh, I'm here with you guys today. Uh, Sean, a couple of things to close out. Uh, one, we know you're a huge proponent of coaches versus cancer. The Farnham Flatbread uh, raises funds for that specific uh, effort, and, and we applaud you for that. And also, it's your sister Shannon's birthday today, so we wanted to give a BYU Sports yeah. Nation shout-out to your sister Shannon. Uh, a couple of great things to close out this interview. I appreciate it very much. Like, she's a great sister, most intense aunt I've ever seen in my life. Like I, like she's really limited on how many games she can actually attend uh, of my children because 
she like loses it. It's all, it's <laughs> awesome. Um, but you know, the, uh, the farm flatbread f- uh, fundraiser is this Friday. Uh, I've got the post up on my Twitter account. Uh, BYU has been extremely supportive of, of me. Uh, and I appreciate the love. Um, but if, if you can skip Starbucks today, or if you can skip like a, a sandwich at lunch and give $5, uh, I've got the donation thing up on my Twitter account. I'd appreciate it. Uh, we're trying to make this as successful as possible. I made a promise to my father-in-law when I lost him in 2018 uh, that I would do anything I can with my platform, however small or however large it, it is, um, to uh, fight cancer and raise money for cancer. And uh, that is what I've been committed to doing. Uh, and that's what I will do again on Friday. And look, if BYU would let me sell the cougar tail, I would <laughs> hand deliver cougar tails. Uh, to fans in the stands if we could raise money for cancer Uh, because uh, it's not about uh, anything more than than so many great advancements are being made in grants and research and trial medications that if we can finish out a couple chapters and sentences I think the wins and the percentages uh, are going to be in our favor and the most important thing and you guys know this you guys are family people I'm a family family guy myself I've got three kids time is the most valuable thing that we have in our life and if we can extend out someone's, someone's time hmm. to build a relationship with their child, their grandchild, their wife, their, their, their cousin, their, their, their mom and dad even, because we're talking about kids losing time too. Um, if we can give time, that's the most powerful thing we can give. And the best way to do that is through grants and research and funding cancer research uh, to continue to allow these amazing doctors uh, all across the world uh, figure out ways that we can combat cancer uh, and make it even something that's livable and then hopefully eventually curable. Well said, Sean. Preach, brother. We appreciate everything you do and, and commend you for your efforts. We love the Simmons Center for Cancer Research on campus at BYU, and, and every, they're, they're doing everything that you're just talking about. So, hey, the yep. wheels are spinning. They're, the wheels are spinning with this cougar tail thing. Uh, let's, let's broach that conversation to, a little bit later. You know later. what? I can come to a football game, let's say, that should be the last game of the year, but isn't the last <laughs> game of the year that you guys are all upset about. No. <laughs> Oh, you guys are the best. I appreciate you guys having me on. And I think that BYU fans should be really excited about how this team played against Texas. Now they got to rinse and repeat and show that they can do it more than once. Uh, And once you start to do that, I think the the buy-in factor from everybody across the country uh, and the buy-in factor from this team realizing just how good they can be uh, because they can be a second weekend team in the NCAA Mm -hmm. tournament, Uh, but they got to see it and start to believe it. Great stuff. Sean, always nice to talk with you. We'll do it again next week, man. Take care. Sounds good. I'll talk to you guys. Sean Farnham of ESPN on BYU Sports Nation, a love weekly it. contributor. So stoked to have him. I love that we have him every yes. week for the rest of the season. That is so He's so awesome. good. We're spoiled. We got we, Maddich Mondays during college football season. Now we got Sean during college we've basketball. We've known him forever in the WCC, so yeah. it's fun to do this in the Big 12 now. Let's go. Women's basketball taking on Kansas in Fog Allen Fieldhouse, 730 Eastern on BYU Radio tomorrow night. That's a game the Cougars can win. Kansas is a little bit down. Up next, an award for a dominant defensive player, another overtime game in the Big 12, and uh, how many Big 12 men's basketball teams are in the AP poll is wild. This is BYU Sports Nation. A plethora. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Do it. Welcome back to Studio B. I'm Thanks, Spencer. Jeff. He is Jerem Jordan. Let's roll out your Tuesday headlines. BYU football's 2024 Big 12 schedule is out. The Cougars host Kansas State September 21st. Utah games November 9th after both have a bye week. Not the final week, but it is what it is. Cougars finish with the other Cougars of Houston at home on November 30th. Cannot wait for the football season in da-na-na days. I don't know how many. 210? <laughs> Seven months-ish? Something like that? Date I'm guessing 210. What is calc- it? We got to know. Date and time calculator. We got to know. All right. As, as Jerem looks. Oh, 214. It's 214. Nice. No, it's not far off. Okay. BYU men's basketball drops one spot in the AP poll to number 22 after splitting games last week, losing close against number four Houston and then beating Texas by 12. Should have beat them by 20, I guess. Why did they drop again? Uh, the Cougars enjoy a midweek bye this week before heading to Morgantown to take on a tricky West Virginia team on Saturday. It's a long road trip, but can the BYU team that has played well at home go on the road? Like, we haven't seen BYU play super well on the road. Can they do it in Morgantown? 
Men's Volleyball, number nine in the ABCA poll after dropping two against UC Irvine. Also, Tion Taylor, the MPSF Defensive Player of the Week after 1.2 blocks per set in four matches last week. Cougs have a bye week after playing six matches in nine days. Men's Golf currently lies in fifth place through round one of the NIT. NIT? What? At the Omni Tucson National Golf Club, round two's competition was delayed because of darkness. Isn't that a thing you can look up when that's going to be? Probably. If the play is slow, then what do you do? <laughs> Junior Zach Jones tied for fourth at nine under par, 65, with eight holes to play in the second round. What an unforeseen thing! The sunset! It's going to get dark at early some point. today. Men's tennis host Omaha today in the first of two home matches this week. First home match of the season. One and three Cougs look to bounce back after losses to LMU and UC Irvine last week. Those are today's headlines. Now some opinions in the whip. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Marist, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Let's have a caption contest. Uh, women's basketball posted uh, a series of photos on Twitter. It included one of Shep in the uh, stands uh, at Kansas getting ready for the game. Uh, what's your caption here? Uh, why is Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey throwing Justin Tucker's kicking equipment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much are tickets for the Super Bowl? <laughs> Andy Reid isn't responding to my texts. Something, mm. something Chiefs related right here. Yeah, it, it has to it be, has right? To be. Yeah. It has to be. Never, I've never met a guy who consumes more content of his favorite teams than Jason Shepard. Like, he loves it, it is dedication loves for sure. This Chiefs, is, Jazz, BYU. A man did his phone. And, and, a man it is. and his phone. <laughs> BYU basketball's Mark Pope is Thursday. There you go. There's Shep. <laughs> Thursday at 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app and ESPN Plus as the Cougars get ready for a long trip to Morgantown on Friday. Hey, they're a projected five seed in the tournament. Beat West Virginia. Keep those marks and a chance to get to 500 in Big 12 play. After the break. Just win streaks of two and lost streaks oh. of two. And da -da -da. Take one more look at BYU football's 2024 Big 12 schedule with Uncle B. Our dual threat analyst, Blaine Fowler, is back on the show. What does he think of the Utah game on November 9th? Is he bugged? Is he okay? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio B. It is schedule release day yeah. for Big 12 football. We just went through the BYU slate. All 12 games now have specific dates. We'll see about times, right? Typically, those don't come until about two weeks before each game. But, hey, we got the slate, yeah. man. We oh, got yeah. the slate. And it's time to discuss that with our dual threat analyst, national champion quarterback Blaine Fowler is back on BYU Sports Nation. Blaine, you've had roughly an hour and a half to – digest this BYU football schedule. So let's just go to the opposite ends. What do you like most and what do you like least about this Big 12 schedule for BYU? I, I like the timing of the buys. Um, that's probably what I like most about it. You know, when, when I was on the show, oh, a month or so ago, and we, we, we kind of knew who the teams were, but not the, not the schedule and how it would lay out. Um, we said, would it, it'd be nice to get five games under their belt and have a rest. And we thought, wouldn't it be perfect if it was conference weekend, which they got, right? Um, and I like that. I feel like they're playing two of the best teams in the league, in my opinion, coming back after the bye. So not only the timing, but who they play afterward. Arizona with Fafita coming back at quarterback. I realize Jed Fish, the head coach, has gone to Washington, but a tremendous respect for Brent Brennan, uh, who came from San Jose State. He knows that program at Arizona. He was a GA down there when Dick Tomey was there. I don't know that Arizona's going to have a drop-off just because the coach has changed. And so I think they're one of the favorites in the league, and BYU gets them after a bye. And then Utah, who is a huge game and always good and going to be good again next year, especially if Cam Rising's back and healthy, that comes after the other bye. Um, so they go on the road. The only thing that could have been better for BYU is if Utah did not also have a bye on that same yeah. week. It's interesting that Utah's bye weeks match up exactly with BYU's bye weeks. But but so the thing that jumps out at me is I, I like where the byes fall, and I like that what I would consider two of the most difficult games on the schedule come immediately following those bye weeks, allowing you to have a couple of weeks to prepare for those teams. So that's, that's what I like best. The league has done a nice job of not giving BYU too many at home in a row or too many on the road. You, but you only have one homestand of two games in a row, and then you have right. two two games on the road. What do you think of that kind of balance of, hey, mo most of the time you're, you're hitting the road within two weeks? Yeah, I, I think they did a pretty good job of that. And I also like, Jeremy, you and I were talking about this last night. Um, if you're going to go to Arizona State, can you go late? 
yeah. in the year. So yeah. it's not 107 degrees. And so <laughs> I think November at Arizona State is a good thing. Central Florida should start to cool off a little bit by, by the 26th of October, sure. right? Sure. So, so there's two road games in what we would consider um, climates that you would have to adapt to if you went early in the season shouldn't be a factor. Um, and so I, I like that as well. I like that there's I like the setup of away versus home. I like where the buys fall. I like that the that the hot climate road games are are later in the year. Um, I also like that a warm weather school comes to BYU at the end of the year on November 30th in Houston. Um, that, you know, I think that bodes well uh, for for BYU. Um, you know, I I don't like that Utah's on the ninth. I know that when you were going to break Spencer, you said let's see if Blaine likes that. I wanted Utah the 30th okay. of November. I think we all wanted it on the 30th of November just to cap the season. It, it's not devastating to me. I'm not going to sulk about it, but but I but I do I do think that it would be fun to have that Utah game that where if they tried to schedule it Thanksgiving weekend to have a cap to the season every year the big rivalry game. Outside of that, I I actually really like the schedule and you know who they don't play is interesting too and we knew that a while ago but no West Virginia no Iowa State, who I think is going to be really good next year. And I think you, you, arguably the most physical team in the league and a big challenge for BYU. They don't have them in the schedule. That crazy offense of Texas Tech is not in the schedule. No TCU again. We're not going to see Deion Sanders come into Provo or go over there. Uh -huh. And then no Cincinnati. So who's not on the schedule is also interesting. Um, and and I, I, I'm okay with them not having to play Iowa State. And I think West Virginia is a team on the rise. So I'm, I'm okay with not playing those. Blaine Fowler is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Jeremy and I were discussing BYU's path to six wins because this is where we go. BYU won five games a year ago. Progression is naturally getting to a bowl game and getting to that sixth win. And we kind of collectively feel like the Cougars need to be three and one through the first four to feel good about getting to six wins. Is that too lofty of an expectation, given that BYU is going to take on a couple of tough road opponents in SMU and Wyoming, and then come home to what we think should be another solid Kansas State team. It's three and one, too lofty of an expectation there. I don't think it's too lofty. I don't, by the way, I don't love that they play at SMU and at Wyoming in non-conference. I don't think any of us love that, right? Um, so, so it is what it is. That's the schedule. Tom honored those contracts, Tom Homo. So I respect that. I wish that that wasn't the case because SMU is a really good football team. They got that, that stadium is really fun. If you're down in Texas, you're traveling. It's, it's like a little bowl that they fill up. Um, it's on campus there in Highland Park. It's a great environment, but that's not an easy game. And at Wyoming's never easy. However, having said that, I think BYU's defense takes a monster step forward this year to be one of the elite defenses. And based on who's coming back and some of the pieces they added already with the early signing date and with the transfer portal, they were lacking some monsters up front. They're, they've got them. And, and with Ben Bywater announcing that he's coming back um, and the linebacking core they have, the secondary is really solid. I think this is one of the elite defenses in the league next year. And for that reason, I think they can weather going on the road to SMU and Wyoming and get both of those along with that Southern Illinois. I think they start out 3-0. Then, then Kansas State comes to town. Quarterback Avery Johnson is back. They do have to rebuild that offensive line at K-State, so that will be interesting because they were really good. Um, along with Iowa State, I think Kansas State, one of the most physical teams in the league. So, so that's a big challenge. And then BYU's won at Baylor before. I, I look at what can they be going into the bye. I say they're three and two at worst going into the bye, and they're possibly four and one going into the bye, and I think that's a nice start for them. At worst. I like it. Uh, let's go. I was going to say, name the uh, – you started to – name the six games – at least, that you think wins on this schedule? So Southern Illinois, SMU, Wyoming. Kansas State's a 50-50 game for me. I think Baylor's, Baylor's a win game for me. Arizona, tough one. Uh, Oklahoma State. Remember, Oklahoma State's got Ollie Gordon back, and then Alan, and Alan Bowman got, uh, Bowman got a, I don't know, is this his ninth year that he gets to come back? <laughs> Cameron Rising and uh, Alan Bowman, seven years. Yep. Yeah, so, so they get... I mean, he, Alan Bowman makes Spencer Johnson look like a youngin, right? <laughs> so, so Oklahoma State, those are tough. Arizona, Oklahoma State. Um, at Central Florida, they're going to have a new quarterback, K.J. Jefferson, transferred in um, from Arkansas. So they'll see him again. How many times are they going to see that guy, Man, right? Good um, gosh. So, but, but I like their chances against Central Florida. So count Central Florida. 
Utah's a 50-50 game, no matter how good Utah is or how good BYU is on any given year. Kansas coming to Provo is another 50-50 one with Jalen Daniels back. Um, Jeff Grimes is the new OC. He's going to come in with a chip on his shoulder. But I think they beat Arizona State on the road, and they beat Houston at home. So count Houston, Arizona State as wins. Um, I think they get Central Florida. Count Baylor, Wyoming, SMU, and Southern Illinois as a win. And that's six, seven that I'm saying right there. Those are the ones I expect them to win. And then there's a bunch of 50-50 games in there. So if they end up eight and four this year, I'm not surprised. They could they could even be nine and three. I would be I would be disappointed with six and six this year. Okay. If they're not at least if they're not at least seven and five, um, I, I think they will have underachieved based on what I know they have coming back on defense. Seven and five. Okay. So run the ball a little bit and let's go. So you, you again, just to reiterate, you feel like it would be if BYU won six games. They're six and five, or let's say five and six going into the Houston game, they get to six and six. That's an underachievement. Now, Blaine, you've chronicled why you feel so good about the defense. What's BYU bringing back on offense that makes you feel like the offense can do enough to win seven games? I actually like who they who they're bringing back on the offensive line, and and I realize you know that they they they've, they've lost a potential first round draft pick at left t- tackle and and uh, Sua Mataia. Um, but I like the raw talent they have there and the energy I felt already just in the offseason with that group, with TJ as the new head coach and what, what they're doing and with his play calling experience. And then and then you bring also a tight ends coach that's been in the NFL and has play calling experience. I, I feel like that those groups upgrade this year offensively. Um, and then the wide receiving core coming back is is very, very good. It's as deep and as good as almost anybody in the league. We know that Martin's back at running back. We know that Miles Davis is back at running. Like I feel like the running back room is is deep enough as well. So what's the big question, right? Why am I not just giddy about offensively? Quarterback. Because if you don't know for sure that the quarterback's great, you don't know for sure the offense is going to be good, right? So so that's my question mark, and we don't know who that's going to be. That's why it's so important that they're really good on defense, especially early in the year. So So that's my only hesitation. Uh, you know, is it one of the transfers? Does Bohannon come in and play like he did at Baylor when they won the league? Um, I mean, if he can do that, th- then I'm not surprised with eight wins, sure. right? Or even nine. Um, to me, that's the big question mark going in. I feel like they're deep enough and good enough at every position on the field. I think they're going to be lights out on defense. Can they settle in on a quarterback that can be really effective and not necessarily go win games, but but make sure they don't lose games in that scenario, I'm not blown away if they win eight games. Great stuff, Blaine. Always good to catch up with you, and uh, I think we're with you. Good quarterback play means BYU can win seven or eight games. Mediocre quarterback play, maybe it's six and six, just like the schedule would say. Mediocrity right there. Okay, we'll right. do it again soon, brother. Take care. All right, thanks, guys. Up next on BYU Sports Nation, what do you think of BYU football's 2024 Big 12 schedule? Some more of your responses. Do you care that much about when BYU plays Utah or just that it's on the schedule? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Our question of the day, what do you think of the BYU Football 2024 Big 12 schedule straight up? Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes from Elisa Whitney Wise who answers on Facebook and says, I love it. I love the BYU plays Utah. I love the SMU game under the Friday night lights. In Dallas, brother. Absolutely. I love that BYU plays Baylor. I love that BYU does not play West Virginia. <laughs> I love BYU football. So couldn't care less about the rivalry weekend because whatever weekend BYU plays the Utes will be rivalry weekend. Let's go. Yeah, we'll make it fun regardless. It'll be awesome. Today's Rise and Shoutout presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We send our best to Fui Vakapuna, former BYU running back who had brain surgery, uh, has been having some uh, spasm issues, and uh, after his surgery, which took three hours, his wife posted on Instagram that he said, uh, the pain is gone, awesome. and, and that's great news because you always get a little nervous in surgery, especially on the brain. So our best to Fui, who's one of our favorite people. Yes. Huge smile on his face all the time. Uh, a little scary with that, but it sounds like he's doing pretty good. It would love Fui, man of faith, um, and he just has so much love for everybody. Like that guy's smile. We talk about smiles that light up a room. Yeah. Can, his smile lights up a conference room. 
Um, the conference center. Uh, My maybe goodness. One day. But yeah, he he is an awesome dude, and I loved watching him play at BYU. So physical. Oh, the 2006 game against Tulsa comes to mind. It's yes. just, it's just glorious memory. He's like a train with his knees. He just keeps going. <laughs> I love. Oh, the energy play. for sure. And he was a Cincinnati Bengal, which we should not overlook. He bought groceries for one of my best friends when he was on his mission. Since That's Fooey. Yep. That's Fooey. Shout out to Justin. Our thanks to today's guests, Sean Farnham and Blaine Fowler. Started in a spinner, we ran out of time. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Shout out to John Fish once again. We'll see you next broadcast. Studio B, live from BYUSN tomorrow at noon Eastern. Go Cougs.